Hi, this is Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and I've got yet another video on some of the new features of DaVinci Resolve 16. Now, while I had a couple of these on my list to go over today, I was actually watching uh, Theo's, Theo Meisner uh, over at Meisner Media. He did a video today that not only covered the stuff I was going to cover, he covered a few more things, and I'll touch on those as well because he would noticed some stuff that I hadn't even noticed. So if you haven't checked out his channel, it's Meisner Media, and I'll have a link in the description. He does some fantastic videos. He really, really knows his stuff. Uh, he's a day-to-day -day editor, he colorist. I mean, the guy is, is absolutely brilliant and really, really knows his, uh, his stuff. So highly recommend his channel. Check it out. Uh, like I said, I'll have a link in the description. So we're going to start off on the color page. And one thing that I found really cool, and it was actually on my list, so he didn't beat me to it, uh, is this new feature where you can go and find the LUT that you used to do a color grade. So if you've done some stuff and now you need to go back to do some work and you can't remember which LUT you used, this is going to be very cool. So let me show you how that works. We come up here, we've got this grade going on. I can right click on it and go reveal selected LUT. Uh, it opens up the LUT panel and it shows me that I'm using the GH4 Cine Cool. So I think that is very, very cool for um, keeping your workflow going and not having to remember or take notes on what LUT you used on a particular project. Speaking of taking notes, there is a new feature in here called Project Notes. So you can just type away in here, um, used <laughs> GH for Cinecool, uh, a little redundant with the reveal LUT feature, but uh, these are stored with the project. So instead of having to keep a spreadsheet or something else with your project notes, it's all right here. Uh, at your fingertips in any particular project. So I think that is a very, very cool feature. Another one is an enhancement to the light box. So if I go to the light box, I can see all the different clips that I have available, which one I've got selected. And now there's a slider here. So I can make these really small and see as much of my timeline as I want. So I, I don't use the light box that often, but um, now being able to see more in there, I, I may uh, find that I have some use for it. Okay, I'm going to get out of this and I'm back here on my color page in my timeline. And you can loop a clip that's been there for a long time, but now I can go in and out and set an in and out point and now that selection which can contain multiple clips is what's going to loop so i'll just speed through that there so we can see you know a section that we're working on together sometimes you want to see how the two or three different clips kind of interact with each other so i think this is a very very nice addition to the looping function and it'll get to the end and go right back to the beginning of that range And since I am on the color page, something I want to mention is on your different curves, you now have a graph here. And this will make it very easy to make sure that you're not uh, going outside of the range that you want and that you're adjusting right where you want things to be. So this is hue versus uh, lumen, luminosity. I can go hue versus saturation saturation versus saturation oh that was hue let me try luminance so these will make it very cool if you want to ease out or ease in or bump or pull down something that's on one of these particular curves seeing it with 
a scope there is very, very handy. Now, speaking of scopes here, I'm going to go over to my waveform. I'm sorry, my vector scope. And on the vector scope, we now have some different settings. We have low, medium, and high. So we can select some ranges there. And we can do the skin tone indicator there. It's, I want to make sure my skin tones are along this line. Uh, that's been there for a while. But there's a couple other new features in here, the low range and the high range. Uh, make it a lot simpler to use the vector scope. There's a new one, the CIE 1931XY, which is going to show your color gamut. Uh, this one doesn't have much. It's kind of blah at the moment. There we go. This one's got a little color to it. So I can see the color gamut that I'm working in, which I don't know that I'll use, but certainly as a colorist, you can make sure that you're staying within ranges that you set for yourself and that you're within safe ranges. So those are some pretty cool features on the color page as well as the new project notes, which I think that one is, is very handy. I really like the uh, show, that, show the LUT that you used and um, the light box is very handy, but the loop range I think is super, super cool. So that's another short video today on some more features that are in DaVinci Resolve 16. Now, little word of warning, and I'm seeing a lot of this on Facebook and the Blackmagic forums right now, people are rushing to install this beta one. And there are problems. It's beta one. Do not do this in the midst of a project. Don't do it if you have some critical work coming up. And if you're, if you want to play with it, that's fine make a backup of your database first. That way, if you decide you need to go back to 15, then you can wipe out the 16 install, reinstall 15, re-import your database. But don't just install 16, hit upgrade on the database. You are going to make your database unreadable and no way to go back to 15. So make sure you do a backup of your 15 database before installing 16. Now I'll put a card up above to a video that I did on how to install 16 without wiping out your 15 install. Again, it's not a supported or official way of doing it, but it has worked for me and a bunch of other people. So if you wanna have both of them, there's a way of doing it. And of course I can't guarantee that it's gonna be perfect on every single machine, but a lot of people have done it. No one has said that it's been an issue yet, but it's really the only way to have 15 and 16 installed at the same time. So keep in mind, this is a beta. It will have bugs. It does have bugs. I found a few of them. It, it is going to crash once in a while and there's things that aren't going to work quite right. So bear that in mind when you're thinking about jumping into Resolve 16 right now. With 15, we had eight betas. It took months for it to get finished. This is going to be the same. We're going to have, who knows, five, six, seven, eight different betas before it goes final. Those betas are anywhere from a week to two to three weeks apart, which means it's going to trail out a good several months. So if you're waiting to do, you know, you're, you're loving some of the stuff, but you're just not sure if you should do it because you're working on a project, don't do it. So there's my disclaimer. Don't upgrade if you're in the middle of a project. You could lose stuff. It may not be worth it. So keep that in mind. So fair warnings. Uh, as always, if you like the video, make sure you hit like, share it with your friends who may be interested in DaVinci Resolve. Click that subscribe, hit the notification icon so you get notified every time I put out a new video. And this week there's been a lot of videos and there's more to come. So stay tuned for even more. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Carrie with Learn DaVinci Resolve. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.